Hello dear, welcome once again. In this video, I am going to tell you the story Girl written by O. Henry. A little modification. So to make it very concise and understandable, I have removed some of the unnecessary things from the text. In this story, there are two places where the action takes place. One is Floral Hurst, a suburban area of a large city, some 1 hour 40 minutes journey from the city. There is a tall building of 20 stories. In that one room is there where this action takes place in the beginning. That room belongs to Robbins and Hartley Brokers. The nameplate is written at the door. So it is already past 5 pm and the office hours is over. Therefore, almost all the clerks have moved away from there. Now the charwoman, that is sweeper women, they come for cleaning the room. And there two people are sitting, Robbins and Hartley. Robbins is 40 years old, a fat man and who is very jovial in nature. He, he has been addicted to many amusements. That is, we can call him as a jolly man. His specialty is that he would go for the first show to the theatres and then from there he goes to the hotels and there he drinks and uh, what all the amusements that are there in the cities, he gets it there. That is his routine. And another man is Hartley, who is 29 years old, thin, serious man. He is, he is not jovial, he is a very serious man. And both are partners. And now, when they are talking about themselves, a strange person enters, he straight away goes to Hartley and he tells him, Sir, I have found where she has moved. And suddenly Hartley gives him a signal not to tell anything from his eyes only. That gesture makes him silent. And this is noticed by the fat man, that is Robbins. Mr. Robin guesses that this strange person should be a detective. And by understanding that there is some secret deal between these two people, Robbins takes his cane and leaves the room. After that, the detective gives a small chit to Hartley and tells, Sir, it's just a week before she has moved to the other place. Now I have got the address. If you want me to follow her every day and find out what all the information you want about her, I would continue. But Hartley says that no, no, it is not of that kind, that it's not that case. So you don't need to do anything further. You have found the address that's enough for me. And he takes the address and then asks him what is his fee. Then he tells it is ten dollars. That would cover everything. Then he takes his ten dollars and he leaves from there. Immediately, without wasting any time, Hartley leaves the room and straight away goes and takes a taxi and immediately leaves Floral Hurst. Nearly 1 hour 40 minutes journey, he goes to the city. Though it is a big city, the area where he has to find this address is something of an old fashioned city. And he searches for it, then he comes very close to Vallam Rosa. Then he gets in and then there is a gate. He pushes 
the button where Mrs. MacCamus it is written. So after that, the gate opens. He gets in, and then there is a stairs. He takes the stairs and goes to the fourth floor. There, there is a woman standing there, whose name is Vivian, for whom he has come now. Vivian is standing at the open door, as if she is expecting him. Though she is happy to see him, but still there is an element of some doubt in her that could be seen in her eyes. And she she offers him a chair near the window, and she stands there with the folded hands. Hartley glances once. with a critical and appreciative glance inside his mind he tells himself that his choice had been really great he is very much satisfied with his choice because vivian was very beautiful 21 years old very sober strongly built but there is a grace in her and uh, there is a calmness in her demeanor she was purely saxon type and uh, so her complexion was ivory white and uh, her eyes were deep sea blue and her hair ruddy golden and uh, there was a beautiful shading in that so beautiful she was therefore hartley appreciates himself for his choice anybody could tell that she was the perfect work of nature so perfect she was then hartley starts speaking to her in a very pleading what is that pleading then he says you did not reply me to my last letter when you knew that i was very much anxious to talk to you and know the answer from you why have you kept me in suspense and do you know i had to struggle for a week to get this address now i have got the address and i have come to you and now i am requesting you that you should say yes to me then vivian say mr hartley i have no doubt i know that you have been anxious but i don't know what to say i don't know the answer now yet i am still in doubt i realize all the advantages of your offer if i come to you at your home i will be safe and i will be very happy this i know it but i have been living in the city for a very long time i do not know whether i will be able to adjust to the suburban lifestyle so that is my doubt for that hartley says that there is no need to feel that because he would give her all the freedom to go to the city at any time she wants she could go to the malls she could go to the shopping she could go to meet her friends whenever she likes so these all the arrangements he is going to make that is his promise and now she has nothing to say but still there is an element of doubt for that he says don't keep anything pending today itself you have to say yes when she was looking at the window and did not respond quickly then he asks do you trust me or not then she says 
to the fullest that 100% i trust you there is i know about you when i was in montgomery's house because that's where they had met for the first time at a supper party and mrs montgomery that day praised this girl a lot and when he came to know completely about vivian that time he realizes that whatever the praises she showered that was less she did not do real justice to her being then hartley says yes i remember that supper when for the first time i met you and i cannot forget that as far as today's talk you must say yes to me and i want you you will never regret coming with me that's my promise so like this he wooed her a lot and he asked her to promise but there was still some hesitation she did not say yes immediately then with a doubt hardly asked her do you have anybody that means is there anyone who is owing you who wants you then with a hesitation she says yes there is another man called town send so town send has already asked her to come with him but she says that he has no right because she has not at promised him anything about it therefore she says it is okay that if she goes with a hardly there is no problem when they were talking vivian sees through the window that townsend is coming to her so his auto was coming there and immediately that man came running rather jumping three steps at a time so you must understand how curious how anxious he was to meet vivian so when he he comes at the door and rings the bell that time hartley says that he would go and open the door and send him right away and he asked her to stay there he would meet uh, townsend at the hall itself and he would see that he goes back so when he sees townsend he was surprised because both of them know each other and he asks so oh, mr hartley what's up how are you here the same question he asked to townsend how the hell you have come to this place how do you know her then immediately he says you have to go back right now he doesn't want any explanation on that and he also says that here is a jungle law now and it is his kill that means he has hunted it as if he is a hunter and that is a prey so like that he says it is my prey therefore i have the right on this then townsend says that he had come there to meet a plumber he wanted a plumber then he says go right from here then there is no need and you will not have anybody to talk to townsend goes away from there and then again mr hartley comes and sits on the chair once again mr hartley pleads at her to say yes and promise him but that time she puts a doubt and she says mr hartley when helois is at your house 
at present how could you expect me to enter your house i could come to your house only when you make sure that she is removed from your house and then only i can come because both of us cannot stay in the same house at a time oh suddenly he remembers that he has to do then mr hartley says yes yes that is correct and i make sure that she is removed from my house then she asks when will you do it then he says the same night he is going to remove and he also says that helois has been a headache for them she was a nuisance for them and they have tolerated her a lot she is a boozer she drinks a lot and makes all nuisance even at day time so he says that they have been in trouble for a very long time because of helois and therefore with a firm heart he says that he is going to remove helois the same night and the next day she could enter his house when vivian hears it she becomes very happy very much contented and very much ready to go to go with him then she says if this is your answer and my answer is yes 100% yes i would come to you but make sure that you immediately remove her from your house so he was so very happy he was unable to believe that vivian would so quickly and so readily would accept his offer he had a doubt even now also there is an element of doubt even even when she has told that she is going she is ready to come and uh, with all his happiness he goes up to the door and then again he asks her really then promise me then she promises him and uh, tomorrow he says tomorrow positively she also replies positively she would go with him the next day so immediately he comes out of the house takes a taxi and uh, again one hour 40 minutes journey he is back to floral hurst so when he comes to the gate of his house he opens the gate and when he enters halfway when he moves towards the door from inside a woman comes to him and uh, hugs him and she says that her mother was there and uh, she had come to the dinner and as there is no dinner it is cancelled it seems so she is going back and when they enter into the hall hartley tells her that he has been successful in getting vivian that he tells in her, he whispers in her ear that he has got vivian he has made vivian promise and the next day vivian would be there in their house so when the woman listens to this news she was so much ecstatic ecstatic means so very happy she burst with happiness and she almost screams with a joy and her mother comes to the hall and asks her what has happened then she says mama you know i am so very happy because from tomorrow onwards vivian is going to cook for us vivian is so very gentle maid we have been so much anxious to appoint her here and uh, uh she was there in montego mary's house for one long year and we know that she is a very gentle maid and very much suitable 
for our house and a very nice cook she is therefore i am so happy and moreover they have been very much troubled by helois hartley's wife tells hartley to go immediately and dismiss helois because the previous day also she has been drunk and she was doing all sorts of nonsense things this is the end of this story so the main thing about this story is that throughout the story o henry makes us believe that hartley is a bachelor and he wants to marry vivian and therefore he he has searched her address and he has gone there pleading her to come to his home as a wife because the dialogues the circumstances their behavior this all make us believe that it is the love or he wants uh, or that hartley wants vivian to be his wife but only at the last moment there is a sudden twist that they we come to know that hartley was a gentleman he already has a wife only thing they wanted a very good maid very good servant or rather say very good cook for their house and uh, vivian has been very good and uh, her nature it's not her beauty here but by mentioning her beauty her structure these all the things we are fooled rather you can say that o henry makes us believe that he is that hartley is in search of her because he wanted her as wife but only at the last we come to know that that is not the truth this is the truth so the main thing is the twist at the last otherwise it's a common story okay thank you for listening